So there I was doing my usual tech research for the day, which is basically a swipe fest through social media, when a message alert from Instagram popped up. Now, the account I have for this channel doesn't usually receive a whole lot of messages, so I popped in to take a look. Hey, this is KX Roars. We've got a case we'd like you to review. Send me a link and I'll check it out. Here's a link. And by the way, we are totes legit. It is usually at this point where I take a step back and do a little research on the individual or company that is reaching out. When you start to gain a few subscribers or you have some videos that grab a significant number of views, companies will begin to reach out to collaborate or review their products. Now this can lead to some pretty awesome opportunities and some not so awesome ones. Now, these companies are usually looking to send you a product for free in exchange for a glowing review. There is a potential for scams here, so if you're in the situation, always, always state your intentions clearly by saying that your review will be unbiased, you will mention the product was sent for free, and never, never accept anything with the promise of being refunded the cost after your review. That is for sure a scam. I have done that in the past, and fortunately I was lucky enough to both get the product and the payment after the review, but you may not be so lucky. Knowing this, if we come back to KX Roars and their case, I got some pretty quick responses to my questions and they offered to ship the case directly to me free of charge. Now, I needed a small form factor case for some upcoming projects anyway, so I gave them the go ahead and in an unusually short amount of time, there it is. This is the S300 or on Amazon, the KX Roars S300 Mini ITX PC Gaming Case Front IO USB 3.0 Type C Port SFX Power Supply 100 130 mm Cable Management System Aluminum Mini ITX Motherboard Small Portable PC Case White. Now there really isn't anything unique about this case other than the leather handle on the top. The real test for a case like this is how easy it is to build with, how it handles cooling high-end components, and well, how it looks once it's built up. To take advantage of this small form factor case, we are going to be cramming as much hardware into this as we possibly can. We've got an MSI MPG B650i motherboard, which will be housing a 7950X. Overkill? For sure. Made it to that will be the Dell 3090, that one right there. 32 gigabytes of DDR5, Silverstone's SFX 750 power supply, and a two terabyte NVMe from AdLink. When it's all put together, this is going to be one heck of a capable machine with an incredibly small footprint. It's time to get building. Cue the music. Sadly, all that stuff you just watched get put in here had to come right back out once I was done testing it, had to go for another project. Now let's talk about the build quality first. It's outstanding. The paint is textured and it looks great. Although I did see a little bit of flaking on the screw holes. So that might be an issue on like the corners. If you plan on moving this case around quite a bit, you know, this handle on here means it's supposed to be portable to grab it and take it around, right? And I've actually thought about doing that on some of my work trips. Instead of gaming on the Mac, which is horrendous, this would be a massive upgrade. And it's so small, fitting that into a suitcase would be very easy. So if you're lugging this around in the hotel, I could see it getting banged around a little bit and chipped on the sides, if that's the case. It might just be around the screw holes where there's an issue, but you know, only time will tell for that one. Now on to thermals. Well, every panel is drilled with holes, so you can't really ask for more airflow. Now in cases like this, you're not going to have that kind of directional air where you have uh, fans drawing air in over the components and then exhausting it in a very specific pattern because you have the like the glass on the sides that forces air the right way. Here it's more the component that you want to cool is right up against the mesh pulling in cold air right to it and that's it. 
Now there was some confusion in the instructions on the way to mount the power supply. Kind of my fault. The picture shows the power plug on the right side when installing, and that's exactly what I did. And the result was the PSU fan was facing the back of the GPU. This in turn caused the fan to ramp up during, well, any type of load. Now this orientation would work for the majority of power supplies as it would put the fan facing the outside of the case and drawing in fresh cool air. Unfortunately, the Silverstone PSU is flipped. The power extension is long enough that it will work in either orientation. So check how your PSU is built to avoid making the same mistake. Not really a fault of the case here, but it would be nice to see a warning about it in the instructions. The CPU and GPU are both way outside what this case should house. So I wasn't expecting any outstanding temps. With a mild undervolt on the 7950X, I was able to get a solid 34,000 in Cinebench at a max temp of 90C. On to gaming. Now I ran several titles with this setup in things like Microsoft Flight Simulator where you see 100% on the CPU. I was getting 85 degrees Celsius. In other titles where the GPU is doing most of the work at 100%, it reached 75 Celsius. Now those aren't really bad temperatures, but it does mean that those fans are spitting at like a thousand percent. So how are the noise levels then? Well, it's hard to judge the case on this because it's not really causing any airflow restriction. The components I chose are the reason for the insane decibel levels. Now, if you went with something a couple steps below the 7950X, so like a 7700, or on the Intel side, like a 12700K, then you would definitely see lower temperatures and lower fan speeds because of that. Also, if you went with a more reasonable GPU, like a 4070 or below that, which is still plenty capable, you definitely see lower temps on the GPU as well and quieter fans. Now the Dell 3090 up there that I put in here is just generally loud. So it can't be faulted. The case can't be faulted for that. So to wrap this up, if you are looking for a small form factor case, I do recommend this case. Now it is sitting on Amazon right now at $100. There is a coupon, I believe. Not sure how long that's gonna last but that brings it down to like the $90 range. There are some competing cases in that price point, but I feel that the build quality on this is pretty outstanding. If you were to put the correct components in here for this type of small form factor case, you would see a lot better thermals and a lot quieter operation. I did have the low profile Noctua fan in the bottom, the 120 millimeter. There is another spot for an 80 millimeter. It has to be a little bit thinner and the one I have is, is pretty thick. You could put an additional fan in there and hopefully that would give a little more airflow throughout the entire case. I don't think it'll affect thermals that much, but it definitely could help. If y'all like the looks of this case and wanna pick one up, I'll put the link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and as always, I'll see you in the next one.